Um, good evening, everyone. The March 15th Belfont Borough Council meeting is called to order. We had an Energy and Environmental Committee meeting just prior to this uh, session, and we'd like to have Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, to the flag. flag. Of the, the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, which it stands yeah. one, one nation. nation. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Sure. Uh, Ms. Hombosky. Present. Mr. Johnson. Present. Mr. Prendergast. Here. Ms. Costi Vasey. I'm here. Ms. Walker is excused. Mr. Brackbill. Here. Ms. Cleeton. Here. Mr. Eaton. I'm here. And Mayor Wilson, we're expecting, but I don't think Does he's it? here. I'm there. I'm sorry. There he is. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Do I have a motion and a second? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 1st, 2021, Brackville. I'll second that. Eaton, Brackville and Eaton. Any changes? Yes, go ahead, Doug. Uh, page three, Ralph, uh, paragraph 11, says uh, gas and brush container should be grass. <laughs> I don't think we want to get gas in a container. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other changes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, approved as amended. Uh, consent agenda, uh, motion. Uh, I would. Before we make the motion, I'd like to remove the budget versus actual from the consent because I have a question. But for the rest of it, do I have a motion to accept? Uh, I'll make the motion. Prendergast. I'll second it. I'll second it. Clayton. Okay, Prendergast and Clayton. And Clayton. And it's okay. Uh, any discussion? We don't have a discussion on this. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. The question I had on the budget versus uh, actuals on line 481.000, unemployment compensation insurance expense. Lori put a note that says opt-out expense. Could could you explain what that means? I, I, I would have to check with Lori to confirm what I'm saying, but you recall... Uh, we had to pay a fee in at least in 2020 uh, because yes. we were not in a program, basically insurance program. I don't know about 2021. We opted in for the insurance, if you recall. Uh, so I'm not sure if, if that's reflecting 2021. You know. It, it probably maybe I'm. I know we opted in to be covered for that unemployment expenses if indeed we have unemployment and there's uh, accounts set up you know against the borough we have an insurance policy but I, I would like to verify that with Lori okay so do we hold off on accepting that one until we get that or do we go just so go ahead and accept it and there's a clarification next time that's up to council. I, I feel confident it's a clarification. Okay. So uh, in that case, we'll just have the clarification at the next meeting. And Actually, then... Joanne, I, Ralph, is up. I, I know the answer to that. That's that is correct, Ralph. That I had to see the I had to see the cost. I just found it. That five thousand four hundred twelve dollars is the exact amount that Lori said she had to pay for. Uh, the unemployment compensation for us. That so sounds about if, right. If anyone goes on unemployment this year, it was to protect us in this year of COVID 
and the unknown of us having to lay people off. Correct. Okay. Okay. So in that case, uh, all of uh, the motions except that item. I'll make it. Aye. Okay. Prendergast and Johnson. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Uh, next item is oral comments. Does anyone have any oral comments? Okay, seeing, seeing none, we'll move on to written communications. First item is from CATA, our, our local bus transportation authority. Uh, they submit, submitted an annual report. Again, they're on kind of a fiscal year. As, the, as opposed to our calendar year, but it's their report, the most recent report, and it's there for your review. Uh, you, I don't, you, you want to ask, see if there's any questions at this time? So, are there any questions? I have a kudos. I like the article they had on the Catago and uh, highlighting uh, our uh, event last year. Yes. Uh, I think other notes is, you know, they've had some retirements there. Uh, so I'm sure they're shifting gears and training people and, and that type of thing. But uh, they're all very, I thought it was a very good, well done report. Next item is Belfont Elks are requesting to use Talleyrand Park on June 14th for their annual Flag Day ceremony. They would start setting up at 3 p.m. and the ceremony would be at 6 p.m. Uh, again, looking for approval for that event. Okay, so I need a motion to provisionally approve the date of Monday, June 14th, with the nonprofit fee waiver from 3 to 7 p.m. for the Flag Day ceremony. All other provisions, including what part of the park they want to use, will be for will be referred to Parks and Rec for review and recommendation with final approval at a subsequent date. I'll make that I'll motion, make that Brockville. I'll second it, Clayton. Back Bill and Clayton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Well, thank you. Next item is similar. It's Belfont Chamber of Commerce requesting to use Talleyrand Park for their annual croquet tournament looking at August 8th and with a rain date of August 15th. They are asking also, in addition, to have all the fees, including administrative fees, waived if the event's approved. Okay, I, I need a motion to provisionally approve the date of Sunday, August 8th, with the rain date of August 15th, with the, with the waivers from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Talleyrand Park extension and all other provisions to be referred to Parks and Rec for review and recommendation for final approval at a later date. What about the uh, fees? Uh, I just, I add that in there. I uh, uh, question, Ralph, are they asking for just the regular waiver or are they asking for? Wait, I read the letter and said they're asking for all fees, administrative, reservation, what have you, unless I misinterpreted something, it was to me very clear they wanted all the fees waived. We've never done that before. No, we haven't. I'll, so I'll, make I, the motion, I'll make the motion to approve it, uh, including waiving the fees, uh, as it stated in the letter, uh, fee waiver for all the uh, fees. I'm, I'm making the motion. Okay. I'll second it, Brock Bill. Johnson and Brackbill. Discussion? I, I have a, a concern about, we have a policy of waiving the reservation fees for nonprofits. I think if we waive the others, it's basically a damage fee is the only other one that's there that's uh, reimbursable afterwards. Is that uh, correct? And there, there, we have a, like a flat fee of $20 to cover administrative time. That's usually the one we don't waive. Uh, the other one's kind of like a, a, a deposit that you get back if you, yeah. you know, don't damage anything. Well, let me just say this. Uh, this is a community program. It's, to, it's Flag Day 
and they're doing it for the community. It's not like it's not like they're just having a concert or anything. Now th this is the no, no this is the croquet tournament. Oh, I thought I thought you were talking about the flag uh, flag. No, bill. no, no, no. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Uh, this I is. Okay. I I think because we've got we're having a tight budget. Uh, twenty dollars isn't too hard a, a request to make. <laughs> I would I would encourage council not to waive the administrative fee. We've not done that uh, since we implemented it a couple years ago, and yeah, and it would just be a bad precedent to start doing that. I I agree. I would I would. So we need a motion to amend Doug's motion to remove. May I, may I make a ask a question? Did, what did we do last year? I they didn't know. have anything last year. You know, I mean, probably the year before they paid it. But when okay. they paid it, yeah, when they had things, they did pay them. Okay. In previous years, when they did do it, they did pay the, the fee, the administration. The 20, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So I need a motion to amend. I'll make the motion to amend to charge them the administration fee. Okay. That's Prendergast. Who's going to second it? I'll second it, Clayton. Clayton. Discussion on the amendment? You want the administration fee and the deposit, right? Right. The deposit can get back as long as they're uh, they don't damage anything, and so right. it's it's a temporary payment. So right, right. But I, I was yes. I, when when Mike said administration fee, left out the other one. I I agree with Don wholeheartedly. You don't want to establish a new precedent. So it's okay. it's both those other fees, but they're going to get back the the damage deposit because they they're very good right. about keeping the park right. So so all all in, so what we're voting on, if I understand correctly, is it's they they pay both the administrative fee and the damage deposit. They will get back the damage deposit after the event. Correct. This okay. All in favor of that, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Okay, back to the main motion. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Next item is the Belfont Sunrise Rotary Club uh, Children's Fair event that normally is at the, the intersection of Armour and Curtin. First of all, they're looking at doing that event on June 5th. However, because of spacing and COVID, they would like to move it to Talleyrand Park as a request. Okay. So another motion to provisionally approve the date of Saturday, June 5th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the Children's Fair to be held in Talleyrand Park. All other provisions, including what part of the park to be referred to for parks and rec for review and recommendations with final approval at a later date. And since this is a Belfont Borough nonprofit, we would waive the fee for using the park. Sounds like a plan. The reservation fee, right? Right. Okay. Uh, I need a motion. I'll, I'll make the motion, motion. Brock Bill. I'll second it, Eaton. Back Bill and Eaton. Discussion? I, I was thinking as we're talking about all these uh, requests, uh, there, w there was a change in the in the uh, requirements in the for COVID, and yes, so we're going to have to redo the math. <laughs> yep, I've, and I'm going to talk about that in my president's report. Okay. So, uh, discussion on the Children's Fair. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So moved. Next two items are related to South Allegheny Street, possibly Logan Street, parking issues. Uh, as you know, we just changed what was formerly the red meter area to on-street permit parking uh, with maybe an hour grace period but however it appears like some residents were parking in those areas or people 
moved into their non metered resident parking area based on the, the way these two letters are describing the situation. Uh, but they're, they're both very similar and both uh, about the same section of town uh, to, for your consideration. Can we move this to our streets and ask these yeah. individuals to attend the streets committee meeting so we can have a, a fuller discussion? Sure. Well, can I ask a question? Because I'm not, well, I guess I am. But, uh, are the Go people ahead. that are parking on South Allegheny, are they the permitted people or are they just see no meter head and they decide they're going to park there? Well, my, I mean, they, they have to have a permit now. I'm not sure what was actually happening in those areas prior to you know, the changeover March 1st. And then even prior to that with our enforcement, I, I'm thinking some of these areas may not have been enforced very well is what I'm reading between the lines. Uh, that, that's my guess that now that we have better enforcement and new rules, it's like a double uh, situation that's uh, creating some problems there. But I would like to have you, you know, I think it's a good idea the streets committee here at first hand from the, the two folks who wrote the letters. Yeah, I had a call from um, another person, that not one of the non-letter writers, it was another individual who lived on Logan Street for a lifetime. And uh, they talked to someone that lives in the Cadillac building and that person told them the problem is, is when we implemented the permits, you're only allowed one permit. So if they have two cars, they used to be able to park two cars there. Now they can't. So sure. they're moving the second car up on Logan Street. So that could be a part of the problem. But as Ralph said, maybe we'll find out more if we bring the people in and have them tell the committee. I think you're right, John. I think that was mentioned in maybe one of the letters as well. Wasn't part of the uh, deal with the Cadillac building that they were going to supply parking? Yes, but uh, in, you know they they were over in the waffle street, waffle shop lot or what we call it lot, what, what south lot I guess we call it now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we can look into that. But with permits there, at least you know maybe one. I, I assume they're taking at least one space there beside the building. <clears throat> I don't know that. I don't know that it's all um, people from Cadillac building either. I think what, what else is going on, if you've read, if you read the two letters that were sent in, is that some of the people who were parking um, down on the lower part of the hill have moved up because now they need a permit to park there and they don't want to pay the permit and don't have to, and the red meters are gone, of course. So uh, even some, some of the business people are, are moving up there and parking. So um, if you haven't read the letters, check out the letters because they're, they're pretty specific in where the problem is. And, and I think there's a relatively easy solution to, to this. But anyhow, uh, take a look at it too. If you get a chance, you're out walking and uh, see what they're talking about. Okay. I think what they're thinking is that they, you know, they've had parking in front of their homes on yeah. top, you know, going up Allegheny Street yeah. past Logan. Yeah. And now they're being uh, used by either right. construction co contractors or something or yeah. people off of Logan Street because Logan Street right now is one only parking uh, on one side of the street. So if we're able to relax that sooner than April, maybe that helps alleviate some of that issue. Yeah. And I think that they, sh you know, they have... I think the people up, uh, going up Allegheny Street should have a spot in front of their place. And right now, they're, they continue to drive around because everything during the day is kind of taken. That's right, Randy. You're right. Mm -hmm. All right. Put it in straights. Let's go. <laughs> no, let's go just slash some tires. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to continue on? Sure. Well, uh, you know, uh, in your packet through correspondence, we, we received some information on a, uh, a former resident, Anna Wagner Keckline, 
uh, noted resident uh, in, in their field. Uh, we're just acknowledging that we, we did receive some information, not intending to schedule any time to review it or anything at this point in time. Then the next item is uh, related. It's from a current resident, Ms. Perkins, uh, that is related to Anna Keck line, just questioning some of the information that we received. Again, there, there's no plans to uh, further this or to schedule anything, uh, but just acknowledging that we did receive two letters on this uh, topic and this on this person. The next item is a resignation letter from council member Gina Thompson. Uh, the letter just, just to summarize, uh, she's resigning, of course. She is taking a position with the borough uh, it's our part-time planning, zoning, and HARB administrator position. Uh, we did advertise, just like we do with all of our positions that go to the outside. Uh, we had one applicant. It turned out to be Gina. Uh, Gina had been the former downtown uh, Belfont Incorporated Main Street manager for a year. Uh, you know, had, had some very good experience, uh, interview and references checked out very well. And uh, we did offer her the position and she did decide to accept. Uh, so under the borough code with any resignation, the council has a 30 day clock that starts ticking to fill the vacancy. If it's not filled, then it would go to what's called the vacancy board of the borough. But uh, if this letter is accepted, then uh, keep that in mind that we have a 30 day window to fill this seat. Okay, uh, I need a motion to accept Gina's, Gina Thompson's letter of resignation from council and officially wish her well and good luck with her new position with the borough. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Brack, Bill and Prendergast. Discussion? Uh, I'd like to thank Gina for her time on council. Uh, she did a good job with the finances and uh, so she, she was a good council person. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll chip in on that as well. And it's always, uh, it's always great to have people in our community that are willing to step up and serve. And I appreciate that from anybody. So thank you. Gina. She will be missed. Yes, Doug. I'd, I'd like to thank Gina for her time on council and uh, <clears throat> all the due diligence she did during our finance meetings. Uh, we'll miss her during during those meetings, but I know uh, if we need her, uh, we can always count on her for advice until we get that uh, position filled. So best wishes to Gina. And I'd like to say that when Gina came in, uh, she was appointed to the finance committee she was very anxious about it, but she stepped up to the plate quite well, and I appreciate that. All right, so the next- Wait a minute, time. wait a minute. Oh, we sorry. haven't- <laughs> You're moving too fast. <laughs> you still have to vote. All in favor accepting the, the uh, re resignation uh, with uh, well wishes, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, next item is we have some information. No, wait a minute. You were going to explain to everybody what the process is now. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. You're right. I keep wanting to jump ahead. But yeah, so the process, <laughs> and well, I, I focused on the 30 day window for council, but I, you know, you're right. There's another part of it. Uh, that under the borough code, which is what we follow, and with consultation with the Center County Elections Office. Again, just reiterate, there's a 30 day window for council to fill a vacancy of council. So it's not a position that is currently up for election. So what, the, what, what has to happen is that the council puts an interim person in that seat and we check with the elections office to just make sure we are on the same page once somebody is appointed, if they want to keep the seat or run for that seat, that they would do that in at the November election of this year. So 
once I, now that this is uh, being approved by council, I will contact the elections office here at the county tomorrow and let them know. My understanding from an email was they check with the two parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, and look for uh, nominees to run for the seat. This is the election part. And, uh, you know, I, I guess that's how they get the names. There's no circulation period for as for a petition, but uh, they'll check to see if anybody's interested. Of course, you have to be a resident for at least one year in the ward in the borough. Uh, we've had occasion where somebody was not a resident of the ward for at least a year. So I, I try to emphasize that. That is a borough code policy that uh, we have to abide by. So from the, the year, I believe, is from the, to the point that you are sworn in to take the seat. Uh, so, you know, you'd have to be in for a year going from basically the end of December, beginning of January of 2020, 21, 22 in, in that period. You also have to be a resident for the appointment for one year. So whoever I gets the business, that seat must have been lived in that in that in the South Ward for one year to the day they're sworn in. Yes. So again, now that that's back to the appointment. If it happens to be the same person, you know, that's appointed and decides to run, yes, uh, from the point that you're sworn in, then the clock going back, you have to be a resident for one year in the ward of the borough. So, so I'm confused on the on the dates now. So you're saying that whoever gets appointed to this will have to run in the in the upcoming November election? Yes, to, to finish out the term. Uh, so it would be a two year two yeah. year seat. Yeah. It's like a special election. Yeah. Okay, I don't remember doing that in the past when we've because yeah. like, we had similar occurrences of this and I thought they just got appointed until that position normally came up for re-election. It depends when the appointment was made, Randy. If you're with, with two years or less in the remaining in the term, then likely, uh, no, it's probably even less than that. But if your term is about ready to expire, you're going you're gonna to stay in. Uh, it'd be less than two years. You'd have to hit the May primary. But uh, every time you're either filling out a full term or a partial two-year term when there's an appointment. So right, just, and that's what I think this is, is a partial two-year term. Yes, right. that's what we're saying. And so in November, the person will be running for two years. Yes. Not a four years. Correct. The seat okay. you're in will be a full four-year term. This other one, it would only be a two-year term, and then they would have to run again two years later. For yeah. a full four-year term. Yes, that, that way everything stays on cycle. You know, in, in each, we have three elected council members from each ward, three wards. They're on different cycles. One, one time at a municipal election, two seats are up, and two years later, one seat is up. So in order to stay on that schedule, right. you know, the person would only fill a partial term, two years. Uh, from election. So the, our process at this end would be we would post it on the this opening up on our website and then at our next meeting or possibly if we don't have anybody, we could push it to the meeting after that to have uh, to do the vote for appointment. Correct. Yeah, yeah we, we'd have at the latest. I, I mean, I've checked the calendar. But uh, you have 30 days, so if we can squeeze in two meetings, which I believe we can, uh, uh, you, you're down to the wire. I know there's three weeks in between this meeting and the next the next meeting, so we might be looking at the next meeting. Yes, I won. One, two, 21. Yeah. We have to be yes. meeting on the fifth. Of May. Yeah, we have to do it on the fifth because okay. the other one's outside the 30 day period. Yeah. Um, and so those, the, whoever applies would come to the meeting, say why they're there, and then we would have the process of having a council member uh, make a motion to appoint somebody a second and do it just like we did. And then 
second person and then we would have the votes. Yep. Everybody good? Yep. Okay, so we'll, we'll post it on our website. If we have a Facebook page, we'll post it there as well. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, other, the other years ago, the other two ward members used to recommend somebody. We do it, we've done it differently more recently where all of council kind of does an interview process. I'm just throwing it out, but all of you are no people, fellow members of the community who might be interested in being appointed. So you can help get the word out as well. Any further okay. questions on this? Then, then move ahead, Ralph. All right, thank you. <laughs> Next item is, is, is the title is called an Emergency Rental Assistance Program Update. You know, folks may have heard this through the county government. Uh, they did send out a, a release uh, dated March 8th. They are in receipt of additional, what I would say, COVID funds that are called this EVRAP or Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Uh, I would direct you to the Center County Government's website slash rent relief is, is the addition to their website address, which is www.centercountypa.gov. And then of course, backslash rent relief. Uh, they can give the ins and outs, the income levels for not only uh, rent, but uh, utilities that you may be in arrears for. Uh, and act actually there's money for future rent. I, I assume if someone's unemployed, uh, they can go three months in advance. Uh, it's my just a quick reading here, but they have the information. We're just trying to get the word out that it, there's funding available for people who may be behind in rent or utilities. Yeah, I, I'll add to that real quickly. So if you if you happen to be interested in this, you need to know that there are some income limits. So if you're a, a single occupant renter you have to make $49,700 or less a year. Uh, and it's just a look back for the previous year. Or I think if you're currently unemployed, you may still qualify because you're having a zero income at this point in time. Uh, then it goes up to $93,700 for a family of eight. Pretty, pretty liberal. So. All right. Well We'll, uh, again, check Center County Government's website if you're interested. Next item is information we received about an update called the 2023 12-year PennDOT Highways Funding Program. Uh, they are looking for public input on funding what they call the TIP, the, the next 12-year uh, plan. And they have two opportunities for taking public input. One is a public forum, which would be 6.30 to 7.30, Tuesday, March 23rd. Uh, I, I don't have the website in front of me, uh, but it, you I know, do. okay, thank you. And then <laughs> there's a survey also that is available with a deadline of April 14th that you can fill out as well. Uh, very important to try to, uh, prioritize where limited funding or scarce funding may be spent uh, here in Center County. So the website that Ralph is talking about, you can use it for both the survey and for registering for the public forum webinar or phone, you can do it either way, uh, is www.talkpatransportation.com. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing is that one of the things that we've been talking about just for so the public's edification is the, the confusing intersection down at Willowbank, Phoenix Street and Mill Street. So that's something that I personally am going to be putting in on the survey. Uh, anybody else can put out whatever they want. I know we've had some discussions about Parkview. We've had talk about traffic lights, stop signs, speed limits, all of those kinds of things are open for discussion. 
Doug, do you have anything else to say from the MPO? Uh, not at this time. Um, I, I think if this comes from us, it's it's good. Uh, I agree with you. We we might also want to, I you know, um, thinking maybe the. Uh, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but Phoenix Avenue is one. Of course, the Parkview Heights is another one. But, but, um, related to that, didn't we do a didn't PennDOT do a survey for the car wash route and. It, no change for the uh, uh, it's, it's standard business to do a highway occupancy permit. Uh, you know, if someone's putting in a new driveway in a right. state road. Yes, they did do that. I don't think there was any change. No, it didn't require light there for the bank as I read the report. Well, uh, just, just to clarify, you know, the car wash is not using the intersection. Okay. They cut in a new driveway where the and redesigned a little bit where the bank entrance is off of Zion Road. So it'll be like a, a right in and a right out. Uh, but they're not using Parkview Boulevard at all for the car wash. So that's why nothing happened with respect to a traffic light at Parkview Boulevard. Okay, to answer your question, Joanne, yes, I, I will be sending the same sort of comment uh, that you described. Okay. Any other comments or concerns on this? I'm happy to write a letter on behalf of the borough. You know, if you have, I mean, I know some of the priorities, we'd be happy to emphasize those, but if you have anything else, I'm more than happy to write. I, I think that, I think that would be good, Joanne. Just let Ralph, uh, write a letter on behalf of the borough if, if other council members agree. I, I think that's the best recommendation. Great idea. I just don't know if it would I, I don't know if it's a letter. I think you have to fill out the survey, Ralph. I'm happy to do that. I'll, you know, if it, I can emphasize borough council, borough government, we're happy to do that. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted the public to know that their input is yeah. critical too. So that's why we're giving out the website yeah. so that you can actually make your own personal comments. And I think coming from our citizenry, it will help push what we've been trying to do for several years and to some extent not getting much of anywhere. Can we get so, that yeah. uh, on the website and Facebook? Yes. So Joanne, no, I took somebody... the... Go, go ahead, Melissa. Go ahead. I was just going to thank you. I was just going to say I took the survey before council. It's very, very short. It's like four or five questions. And there is a the last part is where you can pinpoint on a map what area you would like them to look into. And it just has a very small comment area. I'm not sure if you can um, highlight multiple areas. Um, but it's a very short, it's a fun survey. It's actually one of the nicest surveys I've ever seen user interface wise, and it's very short. I don't see where it would hurt if we all did it on our own too. Yes. It, it takes five minutes. Yeah, I also did it earlier today and there's a little section on how to, they give you a budget to work with and you have to decide how you're going to spend it. <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. everyone should take that survey just yeah. so you understand how budgets work, because you will be surprised at how there's no money for anything. <laughs> no, <there isn't. laughs> I, I will, I will second Deb and Melissa's comment that I thought that was a great exercise. That's why we're going to toll the bridges. <laughs> so again, for the public, that website is www talkpatransportation.com. Thank you. So is somebody going to take part in the public forum on uh, March 23rd? I've registered for it. There's one. Yeah. I'll probably get on there. I have. I don't think I've registered yet, though. OK. OK, moving right. on. OK, next item is some information Actually, our council president received and uh, gave it for us to put in the packets it's in regard to Department of Labor and Industry doing an audit of the accessibility ADA requirements 
being implemented into a building permit application and carried out in the project itself, basically looking at how the inspectors uh, reviewed projects, handled projects. It's really meant to be educational in nature, not uh, disciplinary. Uh, but anyway, I looked it over. They looked, they reviewed randomly three projects in a five-year uh, time period. Uh, I didn't see any findings. I think that was the results. Mm -hmm. No findings uh, in all three projects. So I thought it was very well done and uh, looks looks good on behalf of our current co con contracted code provider. So I wanted to personally congratulate Center Region Codes on this, quote, clean bill of health. Uh, they did send a revised letter this morning uh, mm -hmm. that you didn't see in your packet. In the original one, it, it said that the uh, that there was that uh, Walt Schneider wasn't had been in there in the previous, but not at this current review, and they corrected that, and that uh, Walt was present at the entire auditing process, and so I, I wanted to to thank Walt and uh, Center Region Codes for the good work they're doing on accessibility from a person who deals with uh, disability uh, rights. So I'm really pleased to see that that came out as well as it did. All right, so I think that's all I have under written communications. Does anybody else have any written communications? Uh, I sent I sent out a note to Ralph, and I think I copied you on it, Joanne, uh, to recommend to CNET that we you know we send them our new logo to put us in a sort of bell font because right now it shows the Brockerhoff and uh, street sign for Allegheny and High, and I think the the uh, the logo would serve us better. I totally agree. Yes, we'll, we'll take care of that. So thank you again, Randy. Thanks. Thanks. Anything else? Okay, then seeing none, Mayor Wilson, you're on. All right, thank you. Um, Chief Weaver is back from his uh, vacation at the beach, all, all tanned and uh, relaxed. So if you have any questions for the chief, he may not have any answers because <laughs> he wasn't here. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I, um, I kid. Uh, I would just like to say that Belfont was recognized once again. I don't know if, how many people have seen it. It's, uh, it's on, it was on, uh, posted on social media by travelmag.com. Um, they did a survey or they did a, a top 10 places to visit in Pennsylvania. Um, of small cities and towns under 100,000 people. And um, we were, once again, one of the top places to visit in the state, along with Lancaster, Bethlehem, Gettysburg, um, Huntington, and Jim Thorpe, New Hope, and Stroudsburg. So we were in with a, a pretty nice group of uh, highly visited places, given the Back to this Jim Thorpe and um, New Hope, of course, Lancaster and Gettysburg as well. So uh, that just goes, those type of awards are because of the people that are all in these little boxes in front of me who give their time and effort and all the volunteers that work for, um, do the work that, uh, that help promote our town. You know, each year with all the festivals and car shows and that kind of thing. Um, Ralph, Don, Gina, and I, I don't know if anybody else was out there. Uh, I, I actually went on a separate day, got a chance to uh, tour the Belfont Works, which is the uh, Sutton uh, property. It's, um, it's a uh, seven acre, what is it? 7.87 acres out there. It's a multi-use um, property that um, they're looking for some RCAP money uh, matching funds uh, to develop that. But uh, it's a pretty exciting project. And uh, it says the Belfont Works will continue 
the ongoing revitalization and beautification incentives uh, along Spring Creek. So uh, with with that on the upstream end, if that develops with shops and restaurants and what all, and they're looking at uh, a number of different things that can go in there, multi-use, uh, that'll be a nice destination upstream if we can do a connector, you know, connector walkways and bridges across from um, the parks. So anyhow, it's something to, to look forward in the future. I don't know if I'll be around to see it all, but maybe some of you young bucks will be there. So that'd be cool. That's all I got. I have quite, you know, I, that's all I can read from my teleprompter. I will answer questions if you have anything to give to me. Anybody have any questions? Uh, well, right. I just, just a quickie. Uh, I talked to Sean this afternoon and we'll have the uh, monthly report. police report, right. the uh, park, the parking enforcement and the mm -hmm. animal enforcement report next, at our next meeting. Next meeting, right. Yep. You have a good time, That's Sean. All <laughs> That's yeah. all I have. What do you have there, Mike? Just asking Sean, you got, said if he had any questions. I said, did he have a good time? I had yeah. to come back. It was. <laughs> you didn't have to. Well, yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> nice getaway. Nice to be back home. Okay. If there's no questions, then we'll move on to my report. Uh, first thing is the Spring Creek Watershed Commission meeting is scheduled for this uh, Wednesday, March 17th. And the other item that wasn't on your agenda was some information we received this morning. Governor Wolf is, I'd like pleased to say, is re uh, relaxing some of the uh, COVID guidelines effective April 4th. Uh, Restaurants may resume bar service. Alcohol service will be allowed without the purchase of food. Uh, the curfew for removing alcoholic drinks from tables will be lifted and indoor dining capacity will be raised to 75% for those restaurants that are, are currently self-certified. If they don't get self-certified, then there will be raised that capacity from 25% to 50%. Still can, uh, encouraging outdoor dining, curbside pickup, and takeout. Uh, in wall dining, mask wearing, social distancing, including six feet between diners, will continue to apply. Um, other businesses' uh, capacity will be increased on April 4th, including moving personal service facilities, gyms, and entertainment facilities uh, to 75% occupancy. And then regarding events would affect decisions that we make here in the borough. Uh, indoor events will be increased to 25% of maximum occupancy and uh, outdoor events to 50% of max maximum occupancy. So when Randy said we have to recalculate our numbers, that's what he was talking about. <laughs> um, again, uh, these occupancy limits are permitted only if the attendees and workers are able to comply with the six foot physical distancing equipment. So for example, in our council chambers, uh, that would bring us up to 49, um, that would get, bring us up to 30 people in the room, but the way the room is set up, we could not fit 30 people in the room and still have six feet between each person uh, safely. So uh, we'll have to continue with our uh, virtual meetings or very small, if we're having in-person meetings, very small ones in that room. How will these, uh, how will these new uh, uh, regulations uh, on April 4th affect the opening, reopening of the borough offices? Does that have any bearing on, on us being a full service uh, business again? I'll have to check the guidelines. I didn't hear or see anything that said, unless impossible, you're to work from home. That That's the current order. Now, if that's been modified, I'll, I'll have to find that out. But that's the holdup we have right now, Mayor. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of us going back to in-person meetings, uh, because we don't know how many people would show up at a council meeting, we don't have control over 
the spacing. So we're going to have to continue Zoom for this foreseeable future. Other questions? Yeah, I would say uh, in, in answer to, or in addition to what you've said, Joanne, I think if, if we need to, we can find other larger spaces uh, to use yeah uh, you know there are there are spaces out there yeah but that's always an option if we need to do that for some type of public meeting or just just to start getting together again yeah uh ralph and don and i've had been having those discussions and we're having problems finding those venues that will allow us in <laughs> don has more information on that than i do yeah, how I can tell you is that we have contacted a couple places just even for something like uh, the union contract negotiations and everybody's like us. They're just not allowing people into their uh, buildings at this point. Anybody that's had any space. So that's my report. Any questions? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to building and property. Anne is not here this evening. The one item on here is a the approval of the deck expansion agreement. So I need a motion to approve the amendment to the deck expansion between the borough and my buzz cafe. I'll make the motion. Prendergast. I'll second. And Prendergast and Brackville. Brackville. Discussion. Uh, no, I think you know, we looked at it, building property, and uh, you know, it was our recommendation to council to go ahead and approve this. Uh, it, it'll follow the the uh, same as the drawing shows uh, that that was attached to the agreement. I think with the uh, in the packet, so it's it's an add-on to the existing deck that goes around to the back of the building. So people would be able to actually enter the deck from uh, Dunlap Street as well as High Street. Sounds good then, to me. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Anything else for building a property, Randy, that you know of? uh well we did approve uh yeah, we had a meeting uh, up at the armory to approve uh the recycling pickup for electronics yeah. uh, done by the chamber of commerce yeah i don't have the dates in front of me uh 23rd is a friday and a saturday i believe 22nd 23rd of april yeah. 23rd and 24th 23rd and 24th 23rd 24th so, I'd recommend that to council for approval as well. Okay, so that, that's a motion to approve with the guidelines for the. I'll second it. Okay. Okay, uh, Brackville and Prendergast, you just switch switch places this time. <laughs> Randy was uh, talking. So basically, what would what I remember happening, other than seeing a beautiful full rainbow while we were out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that they would come in on Thursday, get everything set up, and then they would have uh, stations with tables where people would bring in their electronic equipment and play, depending on what kind of equipment, play, ha have them sort of like a, called it a bucket brigade to get play things in there so people are still content, maintain the social distancing. And then they would keep it there on uh, Sunday and then have a uh, packet then they would deliver it to the uh, to the center region recycling center uh, on Monday. I thought it was a, a private outfit that was picking up. Yeah, that. I thought I was going out to was it, I thought I was going out to the tech school. No, they're getting some from the tech school. From the, but I thought it was a private outfit that was doing the recycling. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to center region. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't, I was a few minutes late, so may, that's probably what I missed. <laughs> yes, Ralph. I uh, just, I'd like to add into the, re, into the approval that we get a certificate of liability policy 
naming the borough as an additional insured. And note, everyone, there's not going to be any Porta Johns out there. <laughs> Plan well. <laughs> <laughs> and they are looking for volunteers. Yes. <laughs> Porta party duty. No, no. <laughs> Helpers. Yes, John. Uh, Ralph, on the liability issue, that that will cover us in case somebody mistakenly leaves the hard drive in the computer that they turn in and then yeah we're, probably not no it's not probably that not. it's liability if somebody slips on the property or something like that yeah oh, oh okay just just caution by by all means recycle old electronics but it is always best to pull any hard drives, anything that has any memory and take and dispose of that yourself. Do not turn that over to somebody else to dispose of. And he needs a good magnet. A good magnet or a nice big hammer. <laughs> <laughs> or hammer it and then turn it in. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, just it's a great idea recycling the stuff. Just don't give anybody any memory. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Thanks, Randy, for remembering that. Yep. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I forget things. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Then moving on to finance and uh, government performance. Our chair's seat is currently vacant there. Ralph or Don, you want to uh, summarize yeah, something? Sure. Just what we have on the agenda is just, a, uh, I guess, for your information type of thing. Uh, our annual audit process has started here in the office. Uh, the auditors, we use a firm out of Altoona. They, they're certified public accountants that come in, review our books, our financial uh, records, all those things, invoices, bills, what have you. Do a formal audit every year of, of all of our funds. That is underway. Uh, Lori's very busy supplying information to them or upon request or whatever they need. So that they've been in the office. We, we of course, we practice social distancing and uh, pretty much try to separate ourselves from the other these uh, folks that are here. But uh, they'll work on this, and within a month or two, hopefully, have a draft report ready. And then we you tend we tend to get the final report around the middle of the year, June or July or thereabouts. Any questions? Yes, John. Well, last year with everything that happened, did we ever get an audit report for last year? I, I don't recall getting a copy. We usually got a copy in the past. We, we should have gotten one. I was just thinking in my mind in March, they, they're, they're usually here in January. This year, they're a little, they're later than usual. Uh, and I think that's because we don't have people working here and Lori had to quarantine for a couple of weeks, I believe, but uh, we should have, I'll, I'll check on that. I'm sure we have a last year's or calendar year. We, we do, week. Ralph, I'll forward it on to John and anybody else that wants it. Yeah, it's just that typically we always received a, a hard copy and last year we didn't well, have that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> everything yeah. like that's harder to do you know <laughs> okay mm -hmm. any other questions seeing none melissa would you like to talk about parks and rec um yes on this thursday march 18th at 6 p.m we're going to have a zoom meeting with park and rec and a lot of um nonprofit groups that want to hold events in the next six months. Um, the other two things I don't know anything about, except I think 
the meeting with the chief, it should be restitution, not retribution. <laughs> I, I hope it's not both. retribution. I think it should be both. That's, that's what happens when you try to send things out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch, Melissa. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought of that today when I was looking things up. Not over. judging, just suggest. But anyway, and I guess in our discussions and putting the agenda together, it's kind of a, a tickler that we need to schedule something with the chief and uh, talk about a program. Is that is that correct, uh, Joanne? Yeah, and I message Sean this afternoon. I don't know when when he's going to be available for that. Maybe he can answer that. You're muted. You're muted. The retribution, the restitution part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it should do both. I'm, I'm available any time to talk about that. So. So what did you say? What was the question? I when, said, do you have any idea when you might be able to meet with the Parks and Rec Committee? Whenever, yeah, I sent an email back so whenever whenever you can set an email or set, set it up, be fine. Uh, evening, mornings, whenever they meet. Well, you why don't date, you talk you with date, Melissa? Right, Melissa? Melissa, you have a date, right? Yes, it's this Thursday at 6 p.m. All right, thank you. I, I would just suggest maybe another meeting that your plant parks meeting is getting very, very long. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I yeah. think. All right. All right. Can we yeah. do another doodle yes. to meet with Sean? Yep. Come on. Okay. Don has the, the pool update. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was I was making a note about the doodle calendar. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, got a uh, Mike Musser from uh, Kepler, uh, not Kepler, but uh, the pool uh, Kepler pool update. They come in here the other week just to talk to me. Uh, they were they're getting ready to go out uh, with their RFP here. I think uh, working <clears throat> with aquatics facility design. Uh, the anticipation is is that their RFP will be out on the street probably within the next month or so, uh, and their you know their plan still is is that the construction will take place on the uh, pool this uh, this summer. So won't be it will not be open to the public this year, but uh, uh, hopefully by the end of the year their their goal is is that they will have the uh, the all the updates to the pool completed. That's wonderful. Um, the new restroom in Governor's Park looks really, really nice from the outside. Coming along, Melissa, we uh, have a con It should be finished. Uh, um, we're hoping by the end of the month. Um, the road going to the soccer field is like Mars. <laughs> um, is there anything we can do about that? Uh, we can Andrew. We can certainly take a look at it and then uh, talk to Matt and Dave and see if there's anything that can be done. So uh, maybe we could get some uh, stone, some hauled out there this summer and early spring and put down. Thank you. It's particularly bad in front of the baseball field. And since there's so many people that want to use it this summer, I'm concerned because it's, they're deep. It has some pothole crashes is what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it did too well this winter. Break a few axles. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anything else for Parks and Rec? I have nothing further. Thank you. Okie dokie. In that case, John, Human Resources. Hold on there a second. Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I would. We have received a uh, 
an application to fill a long-standing vacancy on the historical and architectural review board. Uh, the application comes from uh, Philip Roth. Uh, Ruth. And Ruth. Ruth. Yes. Ruth. Sorry. Ruth. Sorry. <laughs> I knew I was going to say Roth, and I, I and there I did. Uh, Philip or Mr. Ruth. Uh, as you can see from his resume, uh, seems to be very well qualified, and uh, I'm making a recommendation. Uh, that we approve him for the hard board. Okay, so John's made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Prendergast. Yeah, I thought his resume looked pretty good too. So, um, uh, seems to have some feeling for uh, historical architectural stuff. So, any other discussion or comments? I personally think he's going to be a big asset to the board. He's, I've known him for several years, and he has done some research on some of the homes here in town, and he runs a business out of the lofts here in town, so he is Belfont-based. He's a resident of Belfont, and he, he knows his stuff. <laughs> so I'm welcoming him to the board. I'm assuming he'll be voted in. <laughs> Any other discussion? I'm Seeing sorry, none? I, mi I missed the name. Who was who was the person? Phil involved? Phil Ruth. He lives okay. up yeah, uh, yeah. on Wilson Street, I think. Yeah, I think I know who he is. All right, thank you. Yep. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. For the public's uh, thing, he's filling an interim seat. So just like uh, the Gina seat for council, this vacancy goes through December 31st, 2023. And then I think it's a five-year term after that. So. Uh, the second item is uh, today at noon, uh, we had our face-to-face -face meeting with uh, our uh, non-uniform uh, employees that are part of the collective uh, bargaining contract. Uh, the uh, we we went through their initial proposal and our response. Uh, I thought it was a uh, a, a good meeting. Uh, we uh, I I think both sides left with a good feeling of each other's positions. So we will uh, continue on with uh, those discussions uh, uh, through uh, the spring and probably into the summer. Uh, and then I'm going to turn over to Ralph and for an update on uh, vacancies. Sure. Vaccines. Thank you very much. Uh, there, you know, we have a number of positions that were kind of open or uh, left open from some time ago, uh, even some that go back to last fall. We left them open on purpose for budget reasons and working things out. So maybe Dawn can help me just in case, but in public works, we're going to be hiring uh, three new people uh, and we made offers, went through interview processes, and they every those three should start the beginning of April. And at that point, we would be fill, back to where we should be in public works. At the wastewater treatment plant, we have a, you know, of course, you may recall the maintenance mechanic retired. Uh, right at December 31st or thereabouts, that position we need to post inside. And of course, if there's no uh, no interest inside, uh, it goes outside or depending on who bids over, that position gets posted and then we go outside for that, whatever opening there may be. Uh, so as far as our, our workforce labor areas, those are kind of the openings that are in flux right now. 
Now in, in supervision roles, we have the wastewater treatment plant assistance superintendent position, the application period closed. We have four applicants. Uh, we will have to set up interviews for those positions. But just looking over here, I think I covered the, the, the vacancies that I'm, I'm familiar with. Uh, Don, do you know of anything else or did we miss anything? Uh, that, that covered it, Ralph. The only thing to, for clarification is uh, we did have a new person start in streets department today. So one of the positions was filled. The applicant started it today. The other two new uh, personnel will start on April 5th and April 6th. Thank you. Uh, for the supervisor one, will the uh, Human Resources Committee be doing part of the interview process? I wasn't planning on it unless, you know, something's changed. I mean, what we do, again, myself and Dawn, and we, we would have the current superintendent set in and, you know, bring a recommendation, uh, you know, go through the process. Uh, it, it, you know, that, that's what I intended to do. That's all that's required, Ralph. Okay. That's all I have as far as vacancies. Anything else for questions for uh, Ralph or anything in general for human resources? I uh, just want to follow up uh, the next uh, collective bargaining agreement date that uh, is scheduled for um, Monday, March the 29th uh, from 12 to 12 to 2. place of meeting to be determined. <laughs> Most likely uh, we'll probably be Zooming uh, everyone on management. I think the collective bargaining team from the labor side will be in council chambers. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, seeing none, Randy, safety? Muted. Oops. You're Still muted. muted. There we go. That's why I don't. That's why I don't usually mute. <laughs> <laughs> so I got I got a few things in a couple different areas, but I I'm going to go on safety here a little bit and talk about street crossings. Uh, Friday night, uh, Kathy came home and said that on Bishop Street. There were issues created uh, from the church having their fish fry, I believe, and people were crossing the street. And one person just about, you know, coming coming from between cars, just it was a near miss. And we were later that evening walking our dog, and we were downtown. We were on the diamond, and we had let a gentleman go past us because our dog doesn't like people behind her. So we were kind of behind, got behind him, and he crossed the street. Uh, going toward uh, the Brockerhof. And he was halfway across that street and a white Honda was probably doing at least 35, 40. And he stopped and he wouldn't have stopped. He would have been hit, but it was another near miss. So I think, you know, I know we're talking about doing things at the crosswalks, but some of the things are going to take longer. And I think on the short end of it, I think, and I, and Anne reminded me this, this afternoon, I had sent a, a note out to her and Mike just to update them. What we're, you know, with safety working with streets uh, and where we were with that. And she mentioned the pedestrian signs, if they could go out. And I, I don't see any reason why they can't be put out now. If, if it's going to snow, pull them in. But I think they could go out at least up in the diamond area for now. The other thing I'd like, to, like us to do is to send a letter to PennDOT to find out if we could put some type of uh, create an island up in those crosswalk areas on, on Allegheny, uh, north and south, on, on each end of the, of the diamond area, and possibly something down toward the Y where that where the other crosswalk is where we've had uh, uh, issues there with two accidents. Uh, what brought that to mind was we were in the armory, I saw there's there's metal planters stacked up in there. And I was thinking that something like that might work or just something that will create 
create a way that slows vehicles down and also will protect the, the uh, pedestrians. Now, whether PennDOT would agree or not, I don't know, but that would be on them because we're trying to do the best we can to keep our residents safe in these crosswalks. Ralph? We have, we at Randy are all, all who are, you know, all the council members, we have a meeting scheduled for this Thursday with the LTAP engineer, a local technical assistance program under PennDOT, who PennDOT hires an engineering firm and they, they allow, give advice for free. I would just suggest we hold that thought, that letter until we meet with this person on Thursday and, and talk about options. I, I think that's the plan. That's what we've been talking about. Uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of things, even in your plan, Randy, uh, flower baskets, islands, you know, why not talk with the engineer and see what's the most feasible and then what the process might be and go from there. Well, that's fine, but that's going to take longer. If we could just set planters out there to create, uh, you know, where it kind of narrows things where people, you know, the trucks and everybody can still get through, but it would be a way to calm the traffic down, I think, as they come in. We could put signings at the very front of it that says pedestrian area, uh, just to call attention to it. I mean, I, there's something we got to do that we just, you know, as Doug said at one of our other meetings that we, we talk about it and we talk about it, well, we just don't seem to get there. But I think this would be a simple plan uh, to try to control well, the traffic speed. I agree with to, Andy. Yeah, well, let, okay. We, we, we talked about the same idea over by where Bonfados is now. The, the, what we're going to do is create a painted crosswalk for the bakery that's in the back of the building along uh, North Potter Street. We asked about flower baskets or, or that idea came up and talking with this same engineer, and it was not well received. Uh, flower baskets, if they move, they have liability, is what I took from the conversation. Anyway, uh, I can write a letter, Randy, and I'm happy to do it. It just, you know, we're going to meet today's Monday. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet with this person on Thursday, and and get some input on what is feasible. But, but I'm happy to write a letter Tuesday if that's necessary. That's not necessary, but I would like to, you know, I'd even like to walk up to the diamond with this gentleman and, uh, you know, try to get something established that we can do up there and do it now before things really start getting busy. That, that's the plan, Randy. Uh, you, you are on streets, right? Yep. So th that is This the is plan. the in-person meeting on Thursday, is right. it not? Yep. Yes. yes. Yes, with one exception. Uh, this gentleman that we have been working with has a back injury, so it's it's tentative. A physical on-site meeting is tentative, but a you know if if that's not the case, you know we'll do a Zoom meeting. Uh, but and then I would want, want also emphasize we did discuss the diamond area. Uh, you know, when this gentleman was here in council chambers last year after the fatal accident. So he has some familiarity with it, regardless whether he's on site or through Zoom. Uh, you know, he, he understands the intersection of that area pretty well. But, you know, and, and the number, the last point is we cannot put anything in that right away other than the pedestrian signs unless PennDOT approves it. Well, we can send that letter on Friday then. Good. <laughs> so can we put out the pedestrian signs tomorrow? Well, yeah, I would I would say so. Now, I'm just telling you, we, we can put them out. I don't know what PennDOT will say, or, or if they have any rules, we can put them out. Well, either that, and, then, and again, moving in, we thought we're going to talk about to Sean about providing uh, police services there at those crosswalks on Saturdays. And maybe there's other times that we could try the same thing, but. Uh, and as far as the planners go, it's you know, often easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. It, in this day and age, it's a liability issue. Yeah. I, I would not do that, Randy, or, or I'm sorry, Mike, because 
I, we have knowledge of, of, of a discussion over there in North Potter Street, the same thing. That's not how things work. If somebody gets hurt because of something we put in there and we didn't have permission, it's a huge liability factor against the borough. Yeah, I wouldn't do it without PennDOT's permission, but I still think uh, a letter would be good once we, if we can figure something out Thursday. Yes, Doug. I, I, Randy, I appreciate your point. Um, I really do, but I, I, I have to agree with Ralph. We're, we, and, and you know this, Randy, we're meeting Thursday and I know the urgency, there's no question about it, but I, I have to agree that if we could hold off until after we talk with uh, this gentleman, hopefully Thursday. I have no problem. I didn't give any day. I just wanted to get a letter sent out and after Thursday is fine. If after we know more, I have no problem with that, but yeah. something needs to be done. I mean, I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. If you're the person, if, if you're the person walking across the street or you witness it, it scares, scares yeah. you. Yeah. I, I, I too support talking with chief Weaver about maybe getting a, a foot patrol there, uh, you know, Sean, I know person, people have to take on responsibility, but I know when your guys are around, they're a little more cautious and uh, aware of what they should be doing and shouldn't be doing, especially the vehicle traffic. I know you're stretched thin, but uh, this this might be one of those occasions where it, it might need some attention, but that's all. And, and that, that's that's worth a conversation with us when you want to. Yeah, I mean, even we could use fire police. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of what they do in, in some situations. So, yep. that's all. That's all I had. I'll rant later. <laughs> Anything so, else, Randy? No, that's it. Okay. For safety. Uh, any other safety issues from anybody? Okay, dokie. Moving on to water and sanitation, Doug. Okay, I'll make it as quick as I can. Uh, we do have a Zoom meeting, or maybe it's on site. Uh, what do you think, Don, uh, Ralph, about the uh, April 7th meeting? You want to meet at uh, Musser Lane, or do you want to? It's only a policy, Don. I, I think, okay. I, I don't think we need to meet on site. You know, I uh, we'll be just developing the policy. Okay, John, any thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, I'm okay. I went out and looked at the gate myself. Um, so I'm okay if we don't do it on site or we can do it on site, but yep. yeah, it's a, yep. nice you, nice what if it works. Work. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's, let's, let's try to zoom and if we I have some issues, then we'll go on site. And okay. you said this is. Doug, did you say this is April 7th? Yeah, that's what I have at 2 p.m. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah I, you should have uh, gotten the invitation uh, yesterday. Yeah, I, ju I just don't have it in yeah. front of me. That's why okay. I'm asking. Okay, okay, good. So uh, we're going to do that. And then a reminder of the uh, grass brush container pickup service starts Wednesday. April 7th. So that means our residents can set out their brush and grass cans. Um, and reminder that if you have not paid your $15 per can, you need to do that before March 30th. It, if you do not, there's a chance that that can will be reassigned to another borough resident. So um, just reminding you of that. Uh, you have the authority meeting minutes in your packet. I hope you've taking a look at them. John, we went over your uh, presentation. It was well received and all members appreciated it. So thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. And, oh, no problem. Thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind folks is I know we're having, or this organization is having the um, recycling for electronic equipment at the Armory Building. And that date was uh, April 23rd. 23rd, 23rd, 24. I just wanted to remind folks that the uh, Center County Recycling recycles electronics of that nature every day from uh, 8 to 4 p.m. except on Sundays. And there is no charge for that. So 
if you happen to miss that event at the Armory, uh, you can take your uh, desktop, laptop, server, computers, cell phones, iPads, all sorts of electronics to the uh, recycling center. Um, that completes my report, Madam President. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none. Deb, uh, streets. Okay. Uh, in your packet is uh, the meter revenue report for January and February of this year. The total for the two months uh, is $16,628.68. I do have a question about the February report under the kiosk municipal lot parking revenue. Uh, it shows $2,295.40, but the dates are for December 2020. Is that a misprint on the date or on the amount? A misprint on the date, Deborah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So things are picking up. Um, on March 4th, the committee met with Dave Kleinfelter to discuss the Lions Club fundraiser scheduled for Saturday, April 10th. The event will be held next to the Brownstone on the Diamond for approximately two hours from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. All volunteers will be under an open-sided tent wearing masks and gloves. All food will be prepared and packaged off-site, so the event will be pickup only. And the borough will be bagging the parking meters at that site. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this event. Uh, second, Mom. I'll second that motion. Okay, Clayton and Johnson. Discussion. What's the date, Deb? April Saturday, April tenth. Thank you. From eleven. To that is isn't a. That is an event that I've seen multiple near misses with people yeah. parking and driving erratically. So I would hope with all the trouble and the problems that we've had that they're more on point this year. Is that something we, that they could that the organization could get fire police for? I, my understanding is they have a retired police officer who does that on their behalf that's trained uh, it, so that, that, I don't know if they've had it every year, Melissa, but they've had it, they, they plan on having somebody this year. Last year, it went much better than I've seen it in pe years past. I, I had to uh, comment that they did a much better job moving traffic through the diamond than they did years prior to that. So I, this, Melissa, I think they are very aware this year, again, of that they that is good to hear. Yeah. Brandy. Thank you, Doug. That's good to hear. This year, I thought that they had said that they were, everything was a pre order. And so people got to get out of their car. They're just pulling in. That's right. They're just pulling in and picking up. In. Yeah. So the only, the only people crossing the street are the ones coming from the Elks to bring those meals over to the, the tent area. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, so moved. Okay, the committee has reviewed the quotation for service from T2 Systems, which will provide a touchless pay option for the borough's on-street parking meters and the municipal lot kiosks. The total for the system is $4,541. If the proposal is accepted prior to March 31st, the subscription fee of $83.33 per month will be waived for the first nine months of service. I'd like to make a motion to have T2 Systems provide touchless pay service to the borough. Uh, Clayton, who seconds? Oh, I'll second. I'll it. second. Clayton and Eaton. Discussion. Yeah, is that is that price right? I thought it was like two thousand dollars because we were already a part of the T two mobile. I had asked that question at the meeting that we had. That uh, Ralph, you'd mentioned something around trying to find the info here. Uh, the price does include the subscription. 
uh, the training, the system implementation, all of the signage and decals. Um, yeah, I see the I see the price where it's forty five, four thousand five hundred forty one dollars. But I thought it was half of that because we're already in, we're already subscribed. Don can answer that. It looks like. You're, you're correct, Randy. The upfront cost is two thousand five hundred and forty one dollars. Uh, Deb mentioned that if we get it in by, by March 31st, the the other, the other two thousand dollar subscription fee is waived, and that's really a fee of one hundred and sixty six dollars per month. But we'll waive; they'll waive the first nine months of it, so we wouldn't really start paying that uh, until next year. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. The other part that I remember, because this was a question we had in the meeting, is that uh, that we can do a add-on fee to uh, the parking for people who use it uh, as a convenience, and that would help offset this uh, monthly subscription fee. Doesn't the... Uh meter uh, the system already charge extra for using that's for credit card purchases it's not okay. for the app okay not for the touchless yeah in this instance uh in this instance mike with t2 uh you the borough can charge uh the add-on fee to recover the 30 cents per transaction so instead of it going to say like a park mobile or another app it comes to us instead. And basically because we're getting charged the setup fee and then the ongoing fee after the nine months is over. I see. Okay, also they've provided us with, uh, I guess, mock-ups of the signage that incorporate the Belfont, new Belfont logo. Looks very nice and would work well. They'll fit right on the meters or on the kiosks, explaining how the system works. So it's just another option for people uh, to use either coins, either cash, credit cards, or this touchless system to pay and for parking. And this touchless system doesn't require a smartphone, which is an advantage for people who have still have flip phones. Right. You don't need to download an app. And you're just texting a number, right? Texting yeah. a number. Any questions? Seeing none. All in favor of hiring T T uh, two for this remote pay program to add on to what we already do with T two. Please say aye. 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 All opposed. So moved. Uh, the proposed street paving schedule for 2021 has been advertised for bids. The bids are due and need to be received by the borough office no later than 4 p.m. on April 19th, and they will be opened at that evening's council meeting. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Keep going. Uh, the Streets Committee has been attending the Pennsylvania State Association of Borough's three-part webinar webinar on complete streets. This covers anything to do with streets or sidewalks, pedestrians, vehicles, bicycles, public transit, roadways, signage, complete streets. Um, and part of this three-part uh, series, the third session on March 25th will include a virtual walking tour in different communities. And at the first session, we put a big B in their bonnet about the diamond. So hopefully on March 25th, there will be a virtual walking tour as part of this webinar for the Diamond. And we're hoping to get some input on the multiple issues that are arising there. Uh, Streets Committee has been continuing to discuss street safety and hope to meet with Mark Hood either in person or uh, by, by Zoom on the 18th to discuss uh, input for the, for the diamond. Uh, and Chief Weaver provided us with incident reports for pedestrian 
accidents in the borough over the last several years. And it's pretty clear that there's a cluster right around the diamond. And a lot of them happen on Allegheny Street between High Street and Bishop, not necessarily in the cross box, but that general vicinity. So this is all very helpful information for us moving forward. Anything else? Any any questions or comments or? Uh, where are we with the cruise requests? Well, basically it's out. We did not schedule them to meet with the streets committee on purpose uh, because it's too soon to tell what okay. kind of restrictions okay. the state will have in place. Uh, so we know the dates, the dates are reserved. We're just waiting till I, I suggested April for the committee to meet with the organizers okay. at the earliest because it may all be moot if we are not permitted to have that size of an event. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all I have. Any other questions? Is your hand raised, Melissa? He's got a thing on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, moving on to energy and environmental conservation, Mike. Okay. Uh, we get uh, um, we got a uh, sustainability project update for the Talleyrand Park students. Um, they're uh, working on getting a uh, more user friendly presentation together for us. Uh, right, what they have now is, if you're an engineer, you probably can figure it out, but uh, <laughs> the public wouldn't quite understand it. So we're, we're working on that. Uh, we have, uh, we had a committee meeting uh, today, uh, discussed the climate action, uh, climate action plan, and we're going to have the uh, Climate Action Plan Commission set up with by uh, Eckley, I C L E I. Uh, right now, um, if I <laughs> short memory, uh, I believe uh, it's a. Uh, not totally the full year, but we're going to have a, it costs $500 for, because we're it's already a, a member. Because we were in the DEP's program to put together the uh, climate action plan in 2019 and 2020, DEP has been able to get a discounted membership fee for ICLEI. Uh, it's typically $600 a year. Uh, there, uh, we can, if we buy for it through DEP, we can get it for $500. And that provides technical assistance, uh, reviews, and, uh, and some other stuff. Yesterday, I uh, contacted it ICLEI because of of some materials that had been sent to us by DEP and I couldn't find something on their website. They wrote me back this morning and said that uh, if we do this membership fee uh, from May through December, they will provide us in-depth assistance in setting up uh, our board. We're ha what we've been having some problems with is trying to figure out what kind of ordinance, what we need to do, what we need to put into it. ICLEI has been doing this around the country and they actually offer Belfont if we were to join this membership, uh, the additional assistance starting in May, but it would cost us this $500. Does that help Mike? Yes, it helps immensely. <laughs> the other, um, do we need to make a motion to get that for this year? Yeah. Well, let's, uh, make a motion that we pay the five hundred dollars for the for the rest of the remainder of the year to get the assistance on this uh, 
setting up this commission or this board. Uh, we have a second. I would. <laughs> I'll second that, Hamboski. Okay, Hamboski. Discussion. I need to ask this because I know our finance director is going to ask, uh, where is the 500 coming from? Should it be approved? Uh, Did you bring that up at the meeting? <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking out loud here that uh, Lori, you know, watches over a budget. Uh, th this I, obviously is not an approved expense. Uh, what we, what I would suggest is, you know, we, we, you know, we, if the council approves it, we go look at the budget and ask her if there's something we can take off the table to make up for it. Uh, you know, we're several months into the year. Uh, we can look at the general fund and see how well we're doing. But uh, I would just uh, give her, you know, ask, allow her the chance to look through and see if we have some savings to date to take care of this. Well, why don't we just, why don't I withdraw the motion until the next meeting and we'll find out what Lori has or, to say. Or, or what we could do is uh, tentatively do it and see if she has the space. And if so, we can move ahead. Because I don't know how long this offer for the assistance is going to last. Well, are you withdrawing your motion, Mike, or not? No, I'm not. That make what Joanne said makes sense. If we have a limited time frame to get this in, we at least have it approved. And if we can't get the funding, then we can always withdraw. I'm going to have to vote no on this one until we see where the 500 bucks is coming from. Any other discussion? I would um, be, I'm sorry, I, I would be more comfortable if we knew what kind of revenues were coming in for general fund. Right now, there's zeros showing. It's showing that we're, uh, you know, we're not, we're yeah. minus uh, dollars in the general fund at this point. And we just keep adding to it. Uh, so. So I don't know if it's a good idea right now. I mean, I don't, I don't see much of a discount. All they're discounting us is the time we haven't been part of membership. Some the sounds of it. Other thing, Randy, is we've got safety issues on the streets right now, yeah. and we don't know what money we're going to be spending for that. Yeah, we, well, well let me let me put something else in the pot, and it was something I discussed this afternoon. If we can't find the money in the budget. My husband said he's willing to put in the $500 to pay for this subscription so that we can do it if that's legal. And that's what I don't know. I don't know if that's a conflict of interest or not. I think that's a lot to, a lot to ask at this point. It seems like it should be a borough responsibility. And, and we don't, we're not, I'm not ready to appropriate those funds at this time. That's just me. So. And to be honest, I had not given it any thought before Ralph asked that question. Sorry, I just happen to think here, and you know, we talked briefly about the membership fees, but as I sit here, you know, I know Lori's going to ask uh, which fund and all that, where's the money coming from? No. I'm only one vote, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my concern too is, you know, we're still, we're still, we still have ways to go to get back to normal in the borough as far as, uh, you know, our finances and things like that. And we went into the uh, planning process, uh, you know, trying to watch our our dollars uh, from going out in certain situations like like this, where it's wasn't necessarily budgeted. You know, we always get requests through the year for for uh, donations or whatever. Uh, or another project. And I think we need to kind of stick to the budget and the plan that we provided uh, that we you know, just discussed last year in the planning. I, I'm more than willing to withdraw my proposal until we find out what the financial situation is. 
I feel like we didn't give this much thought to giving money to the train station for a plaque. So I think if that's the energy we're going to have towards one thing, then we need to have that energy towards all because it's a little bit unfair. I, I would just say, I know where that money's coming from. That's coming out of the parks fund. Uh, I don't know where this money's coming from. That, that's my question. I did not know it was coming out of the parks fund and that is not what I would have proved parks money for when we need other things. That was not brought to my attention in our meeting. This, this is why I have a, I think we should do a little more diligence on this and see what, where the money is available, if it is available. So what, what you're asking for is to table the motion because it's been seconded, so you can't just withdraw it. So if that's what you table, want to do. I would table the motion until we find out what the finances are and bring it up at the next meeting. Okay, that does not require second. It uh, and it goes directly to a vote without discussion. So all in favor of tabling till the next meeting, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. John. Oh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm not going to oppose it, or I'm not going to oppose it, uh, but um, I guess the question you, what I'm more interested in, Joanne, so the motion passes. Uh, you two third, it takes two thirds to table a motion. So what we have, oh, well, let's do hey, a roll boy. call. Hey, boy. Okay, let's do a roll call, Ralph. Okay. Ms. Lombowski? Uh, no. Mr. Johnson? Okay, are we voting for tabling it or? What, yes. What? Yes. No, I'm not clear on, yes. So I'm voting to table it. Mr. Prendergast? Table. Table is a, is a, yeah. Yes. Ms. Tossi Vasey? No. Ms. Mr. Brackville? Yes. Ms. Cleeton? Yes. Mr. Eaton? Yes. There's five yeses and two noes. And two thirds of seven is four. So it's tabled till the next meeting. Yes, now John. Some comments. Uh, my, my question is for, for what Joanne, what Joanne's husband offered. If the, the climate change committee would raise funds, if they choose to do this and they raise the funds, to pay for this enrollment. Do we have a problem with that? We don't know yet. Yeah, what are the can. other expenses after you're enrolled? What, what expenses do we occur, incur after that? It, it's, it's a very broad question. Uh, under We've had other questions go to the borough solicitor that are similar in nature in that what is a conflict of interest by and it really boils down to is somebody involved receiving a financial benefit now in, from what i heard someone's giving the financial benefit not receiving it but i you know if, if there's any question you go you should recommend a, uh, a legal opinion through the borough solicitor for clarification Spend more money on that than the five hundred dollars cost. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. I mean, to one extent, you know, Melissa's raising a valid question. We're making a, a mountain out of out of an issue that we we never raised when we talked about the plaque at the railroad station, which somebody said was the Pennsylvania Railroad, and I don't think the Pennsylvania Railroad ever went past the Belfont train station. So, uh, you know, 
I, I, yes, table this motion, but we are being very picky selectively instead of being uh, equal handed when we're talking about these uh, small uh, amounts of uh, or small requests. So that's my comment. Well, uh, I, I'm going to disown. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to call the rest of this discussion out of order because we tabled it. And that's discussion on the original motion. So um, even though I'd like to hear the <laughs> continued conversation, I don't think to be fair to everybody that we could continue that. Great. Sorry. The, the uh, last item I have is we have uh, the engineering firm of Wilson Engineering doing a draft of the borough energy management plan. And uh, do we have a date on that? Uh, not a date, Mike. What we need to do is uh, we'll send out a doodle calendar and get the committee together okay. along with uh, the engineer to go over their draft. Okay. So that's a meeting that needs to be set up. Okay. And that's all I have. Okay. Any questions? Same. I have a question. How do I get that 500 bucks back for my park committee? That's my question. Okay. Ralph, talk to Lori. It was 500, it was 200. And something. Yeah, it was like 250. Yeah, 250. Uh, I, want a, I want a water fountain, not a plaque. <laughs> it's in the park. <laughs> okay, moving on to Office of Community Affairs. Let me go over these for you then. Uh, just turn the page here. Uh, first one, just a couple of things under planning and zoning. Uh, hopefully you all received a copy uh, from the planning commission, a draft of what we call the short term rental ordinance. Uh, basically you've heard the term intermittent rentals, short term rentals related to the concept of Airbnbs. Uh, residents renting out their houses and then uh, more recently we've heard of not only renting out the house but separately renting out a swimming pool a gazebo what have you we call them amenities anyway the planning commission has spent uh, actually over a year looking at this issue if you recall I'm going to guess it was in 2019 or thereabouts a local B and B owner and operator came to council and talked to borough council about adopting some regulations because uh, just basically to even the playing field a little bit. So that does that discussion that meeting led to, you know, numerous meetings and the planning commission level and finally a draft has being recommended to borough council. Now, what we're asking is not to take action this evening. You can start reviewing this at any time. What we'd like to do is set up a work session and go over the draft with you and see what questions you may have. Uh, then at, when we feel it's appropriate, we'd go to the borough solicitor to look over the draft, which is we, we feel is needed and it's recommended from the planning commission. And then when we have pretty much the near final draft, we can have a public hearing, invite people to you know, put this online for review and comment and open up uh, a public hearing for additional comment uh, before any actions considered. So uh, that's what's being recommended from the planning commission. Uh, as I said, we will be setting up a work session in the near future uh, to do this work. Uh, my looking at our schedule is it looks like we could probably do this on for the April 5th meeting for the work session. It's good with me and uh, that's what we're, we'll start working on then. Uh, so that was planning HARB, the Historical Architectural Review Board. I had two projects go through the last meeting, so I'm, I'm breaking them down on purpose uh, because there's two different types of recommendations. One's uh, the first one at 251 North 
Allegheny Street. It had two components, a carriage house uh, renovation and a porch, front porch, side porch work. The, all of that material, there's two applications are being recommended for approval. Do I have a motion to approve the porch addition on the back side of 251 North Allegheny Street and the redesign and improvement on the carriage house uh, in the alley behind there? I make the motion to approve that request. Brackbill? Second, Johnson. Brackbill and Johnson. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, so moved. The next application was for porch floorboards being replaced at 127 East High Street, uh, basically around the courthouse area. Uh, the boards uh, that are being proposed uh, do not complement the age and character of the house. Uh, the, there was really no representation present uh, during our virtual meeting. Uh, so it really wasn't really an opportunity to, to get a feel for options that were available. Uh, although since then, you know, the, the applicant is working on options, but the HARB in, uh, had recommended denying because that, that's really the only option was in front of them. So they're recommending to deny the proposed porch floorboards at 127 East High Street. So, so to be a little clear, I was in on that meeting. So what, what I'd like to see is a motion to accept the rejection of the proposed flooring has presented. But if you look at the notes, allow an administrative uh, approval to Center County Housing Authority who own the building for, for the suggested tongue and groove flooring if they agree to it. If not, then they would need to come back to HARB for further discussion and recommendation for approval. So, so it is a Center County property? Yes. Well, it's a Housing Authority property. Center County Housing Authority property. Okay. I'll, I'll make the motion so we can discuss. Okay, Brackbill. Yeah. Discuss. I'll second to Clayton. It's Brackbill and Clayton. Okay. okay. So, Go ahead, John. So it is okay. The, because I was baffled because in one one it lists a person's name one place and then elsewhere it listed Center County. So, well, they they had. Yeah, to clarify, they had a representative who could not make the meeting that is not a county employee, uh, but our understanding it's owned by the housing authority. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, if the housing authority owns it, they should be able to properly repair it, considering where it's located. Yeah, there, there's no, there's no, doesn't seem to be any real pushback. It's just the fact that the ARB was reviewing one option. Uh, they didn't like that option. Uh, it's just, I think, it's a communication. So I think it's going to work itself out. Okay. So what basically what happened was uh, HARB decided that if we could, if they were agreeable to what they thought was the best, then we did we the approval would come through administrative approval. But if they didn't, and they wanted to do something else, they would come back to HARB and by doing this particular motion the way I stated it would make make that those steps possible. Okay. Did you make the motion, Joanne? No. I I asked for it to make it and then uh, Randy made accepted what I suggested as okay. the motion. Okay. I, I can't make a motion. <laughs> I know that. I thought I heard you say you made the motion. No, I explained right. what I thought the motion ought to be, and Randy said he would take that. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I vote yes. Let's vote. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Seeing, oh, Mike, you got your hand. Oh. No, no, I'm just scratching. Poking, poking myself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, so moved. Thank you. 
The next area is the nuisance codes reports. That's the you know grass cutting, snow removal, trash cans left out, uh, those types of things that we we have talked about from time to time. Uh, Mr. Brooks, I see his name here, so he, he's joining in. Uh, but he did submit a report. Again, hopefully you received it in your packet. Uh, we're looking for feedback. You know, this is his first report. So uh, please look it over if you have not had a chance and offer feedback. I see one thumb up, so that, that's positive. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, let us know. Very well. I thought it was excellent. Well. I thought excellent. it was an excellent well, report. It was well, wonderful. easy to read. Yeah. Thanks, Use Harry. Great job. Thanks, Harry. Three cheers to Harry. So thank you. So thank you very much for all of that. Uh, we we want to let you know and kind of give you a status report. You know, last year was COVID, of course. You know, so not not much activity took place, and uh, you know, we, before that, we had some back and forth. And in that, some discussions on changing the sidewalk ordinance. You know, the 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 policy legislative part of the ordinance. Uh, there was some back and forth on, but I don't believe we completed anything. And of course, now here we are in the spring of the year, having just hired a new a new code person. And and we we as administrators are saying, you know, we've got to get out and pick up where we left off with sidewalk inspections, with notifying property owners of deficiencies and giving them plenty of time to make the necessary repairs, find a, you know, a contractor to do the work and so on. Uh, one of the dilemmas that we have seen that we really think a, a minor modification would clarify is that we used to do a bid thing where we found maybe one or two prime contractors, so to speak, uh, where they would say for any sidewalk, it's going to be X number of dollars, thinking that they would probably get, you know, 25 or 30 projects in the borough. Uh, and, and believe it or not, as you, as we, you may recall, we described some problems with that that we didn't foresee in the administration part. You know, if the contractor did not do a very good job or the owner did not like the way the work was done, then there was a, a, a gray area as to what's going to happen. We would prefer just to make a minor modification that sort of go back to the way we've done it a long time ago notify the owner you're responsible to repair the sidewalk and all we can do is give you a list of non-recommended but a list of potential contractors to get in touch with about doing repairs uh, we have people who who have dropped business cards off here people who have, may have done work in the borough that we're familiar with but we don't endorse anybody We've never endorsed anybody other than that big prime contractor. Uh, but anyway, in order to stay on schedule, to give people the full summer and early fall to do the work, we're looking at uh, I'm requesting uh, staff to make some draft modifications to the existing sidewalk ordinance bring it back at the next meeting, have you look at it, consider it, and then uh, hopefully give us the approval to advertise it for amending, for formal adoption of those amendments. We're not looking for an overhaul, we're looking at something minor modification wise to keep us on track, on schedule and so on. So uh, just clarify, because if I remember this from our meeting, um, for people in the historic district, if you do the traditional sidewalks uh, that are there, the cement sidewalks, there's you don't have to do anything. If you want to do something special like slate 
or permeable or uh, bricks that will probably have to go through HARP. Is, is, did I remember our conversation correctly? Yes. Okay. And that, that's really along the same lines as what we've always done since the HARP's been around. You know, anything special went through the HARB and, and all they do is recommend it comes back to Borough Council. Hey. Yes, Deb. A question about your timeline. If you have a property owner who needs to take care of sidewalk repair and you give them X amount of time to take care of it, what happens at the end of that time period if there's been no action on their part? Well, we, we, we have to go through a process and that I've clarified the ordinance that that is spelled out. I can't remember, you know, the window of time they have to make the repairs, but after the fact, we re-notify them, typically give them another shorter, much shorter deadline. Uh, we can also, if need be, take the person, the property owner to the district justice and, and ask that a, you know, firm deadline with uh, fines each day that the sidewalk is not repaired be in instituted. Yeah. Uh, generally, when we get close to that, we get action. So, Ralph, I thought if I recall from our review, and John, you can probably uh, go in on this. I thought that if they didn't do it, then the borough would do it and put a lien on the property or? That, that's only if somebody's not they have that property is abandoned or whatever it's owned by a bank there's no property owner around that would that has taken any responsibility for the property uh we again we don't want to get into the business of fixing sidewalks especially property owners okay. sidewalks i i'm sure we as i said there was a lot of back and forth a lot of discussion but we didn't finalize anything so we're looking for, you know, going back to uh, say a, a very streamlined process, somewhat simplified, somewhat in line with, uh, you know, the, our surrounding municipalities, uh, just to help us make sure we maintain the sidewalks and give people plenty of time to make the changes, the repairs they need to do. So, Ralph, do you need a consensus or you need a motion to do that for what you want to do? I prefer a motion. That that's a that's a signal to me that you're I will make that motion. Thank you. Uh, and the motion is to have them draft a, a revision to the ordinance pertaining to the statement that Ralph made. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I'll second it. Brackbill and Prendergast. Discussion. What about homeowners that never fix their sidewalk in the last round? Well, the first thing, one of the first things we did is give uh, Mr. Brooks the, the, the list that we are familiar with. Uh, I, I'm sure in our process, we can go back over those, Melissa, and see who did not comply and, and, and put them on the top of the list to notify. Uh, I don't know if we're going to give them another round. You know, if we, we have correspondence here uh, that, that, that would speak volumes, but uh, you know, something we'll have to look into. If you know of certain addresses, please forward them to us and we'll, we'll look into it. I think my neighbor does, so I will ask him. Okay. Any other questions? Concerns? Okay, move on to uh, for this motion to proceed with revising the sidewalk ordinance in this simplest in this simpler matter manner than prior. <laughs> Please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Um, Special committee reports. We just have a note that the, the uh, standard code statistics were uh, were received from Center Region Code. They're there for your review. I'd like to say that I like this new version. This is different from what we've received before. 
I like it. I think it's helpful in understanding the summary report that we had been receiving. So I appreciate the additional information. Okay, thanks. Yes, Randy. So uh, a couple things. Uh, Nittany Valley Joint Planning Committee is meeting, <coughs> is scheduled uh, a meeting for Thursday, March 18th at 6 p.m. This will be an in-person meeting to reorganize and uh, approve minutes and approve payment of advertising. Uh, our meeting dates and the approval of financial financial statement. There's no other business that's being uh, taken in on on that particular night, uh, and then that that'll run from probably six to six thirty, and then at seven o'clock. Well, I'm, let me go back to the reorganization. The representation will come from Walker for the chairperson, Marion Township for the vice chair, and Benner for the treasurer. But as you some may not remember or know this. Belfont's always taken care of paying the invoices for the Nittany Valley. It, it, the money comes in from the Nittany Valley and that's the money that's used. It's not Belfont money, but uh, just want to make that clear that Benner will provide a person to be the treasurer and collect the, the invoices and then get them into Lori for payment. Uh, and that'll be a two year term uh, for 21 and 22. Uh, and then there, after the after the meeting, that meeting, the Nittany Valley meeting, we're going to be going into the Nittany Valley Fire Safety Ad Hoc Committee uh, for the Nittany Valley members and fire chiefs. Who will be hold, we'll be holding a meeting starting at 7 p.m. to discuss uh, DCED fire study, uh, which we started discussion last year at this time, and for some reason got stopped. I think we all know why. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get back get get back to discussing that. And then uh, Belfont Fire Department Executive Committee meeting is on 325 uh, at 7 p.m. at Lambert Hall. And that's all I had. Any other special committee reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to Ralph's report. I did submit a written report, second one, looking for feedback or any comments you might have. I thought I thought it was a good thorough report, Ralph. Thank you very I much. Did too. Okay, thanks. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. Old business, there's a couple items we uh, have listed here. Looking at uh, scheduling a special meeting with the consultants that help do the strategic management plan, the tentative uh, meeting night and time would be 6.30 p.m. on March 29th, it's a Monday. Uh, we would use the virtual meeting format. So uh, please let us know if that's available, hopefully it is. We'll, we'll go ahead and finalize scheduling that and advertising that uh, accordingly. Again, that the purpose or the topic would be to complete that review of the strategic management plan. So this would result in an advertising of a special meeting because it'd be full council. And if, and this is on the fifth, Monday night, so I'm hoping that everyone can do that. If we do this date, then uh, we have to have comments from uh, Council by close of business on March 22nd, so we can get those comments to the consultant prior to this meeting. What was that date again, Joanne? March 22nd, it's a Wednesday. Do you want comments actually, on actually just it's the 24th? We get the comments by the 24th. We can turn them around and get them to them. OK, by OK. <clears throat> yes, Deb. Uh, do you want the comments just on the first four parts of the plan want... that we've that we've been they... rehashing or do you want it on their recommendations also? They asked for everything. OK, you got I, it. I just hope that this isn't another reoccurrence of review, review, review. Uh, <laughs> that was getting old fast. And I, st I started looking at it and it's, 
for me, I kind of struggle with with it a little bit. There's just a, just a lot of stuff because, you know, I know they made some changes and I and with the changes they made, they took businesses out and different things. And I'm wondering, well, how did that affect the numbers? Because I'm not sure. Nothing shows me that numbers changed. So I don't know, you know, if they could have highlighted something where numbers changed in that presentation or not. But. Could, he, could he use some markups? Yeah. Well, and they made changes to the first four sections that we've all discussed, but they did not make any changes to the recommendations. And, you know, there's there's a real disconnect there. Well, well we made some changes in during that last meeting with them, but I don't I didn't get that far into it, whether they actually put those changes in or not. They didn't. They okay. made changes to the, the main part of the document, but they made absolutely no changes to the recommendations. Yeah. There you go. And so one leads to the other, you know? So you'll get comments. And number five, half of us never had number five. So that'll be a new one. So how much did we pay for this uh, evaluation? Well, it's right there going, it's a real deal. <laughs> I keep doing the same thing. 50K, I think. With, with a state grant. 50, yeah. 50K get, with a state uh, grant. Can we make sure that we all have mm. the most current revision? We do. Uh, that came out after that meeting about what, Ralph, about four or five days later? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah the, I mean, situations like this, there's a lot of boilerplate stuff. I mean, that was that was evident when you know we found the lands down yeah yeah the other name and i mean it's a spoiler plate and then you toss you toss in it's like salad you throw in uh the base the lettuce and then you toss in a couple other things that uh, are are relevant to the the town and uh there you have it so i don't know it's it's a work in progress i mean randy you got it you got to look at this thing little by little. We haven't even touched the police on this yet. And there's a whole, that's probably one of the bigger sections of the we, whole thing. We discussed police at the last meeting with them. We didn't really get into it uh, very far. No, because we spent most of the time going back over the other stuff. I that's know, the we problem. Did, yeah, we, we wasted a lot of time on some things. And we still are wasting a lot of time on it. And here we are. So I'll be quiet. <laughs> So, we so, so Ralph or Don, can just just to make sure that everybody does have it and they're not going back to the earlier one, could you send out the most recent one one more time? Sure. Thank you. So as Don was asking, can we, we're okay with moving ahead to schedule for the 29th? I'm good. Yep. I, I can do that. Okay. All right. Collectively, were we all underwhelmed by the experience? <laughs> I don't know. I got a good nap out of it. There, there were good parts and bad parts. Most of the good parts was in the things that needed to be done, or the, you know, and uh, and the, and that part of it. But the other part, it, it is what it is. It, it, if you if you if you can find it and pick it out, fine. If you can't, it'll be in there all the time. So uh, you know that. I guess from one to three, those were the ones that had most of the issues with. As far as yeah, what we need to do to improve, that was easy stuff. And that that's kind of where I'd like to be with this at this point, not going back over items one, two, and three. I, I, I just feel that they didn't tell us anything that most of us collectively could have said before we spent the money. 2020 hindsight. Well, I think somebody, I think people warned us that that might be the outcome. Well, the gentleman from the state didn't seem too enthusiastic about it either. Yeah. Yeah. His supervisor sitting in on the 29th. Hey. Along with him. We'll be careful, <laughs> maybe. Can we move along? Yes. <laughs> okay, so the next item we have under old business, and we've talked about this, motorist, pedestrian safety issues in our community. 
we're looking at setting a special work session and looking at getting public input at, for a meeting on April 19th. Uh, we, of course, we may want to look at some additional advertising. Uh, we, of course, we have the meeting work sessions are always advertised in that the dates are advertised, but we don't advertise the topics. So uh, obviously we'll put some information out on the websites and our Facebook page and do a public service announcement. But uh, I, of course, we're limited on, on resources, but that's our plan to do that. All right, any questions? Then we'll move on to Don's talk about CDBG. Yes. I'll just mention that the, the 2020 Community Development Block Grant Funds Project for South Spring Street, West Bishop Street was approved uh, along with the county's um, projects. Uh, they are expecting the contract sometime in April and uh, we'll begin working on the 2021 application in May and June, same project. Great. So that for the public's edification, that means we're not going to be doing the project this year. The money's there to be doing it once we get the second part of the grant. Yeah, I think we can maybe start with getting an engineer on board late this year to begin working on the uh, drawings. Any questions? Seeing none, Ralph. Um, new business? New business, okay. We have an item here. Uh, Center County government, particularly around the courthouse, is having some issues with the, the new permit parking area. I think obviously it's a new change for the towns. We heard about South Allegheny Street, similar people parked. Some did, some didn't, some fed the meters, you know drove different vehicles they're struggling to get caught up with this and they have a you know large significant workforce in that area uh so we have, we i'm asking for allow staff to meet with their staff to hear firsthand you know what the concerns are what the issues are and work out a program or a resolution and bring that back to you uh i uh, we're looking at a meeting because the people are not available till probably uh, a week from Tuesday, I think it is, is the earliest we'll be able to meet, but we'd like to uh, meet with their staff and, and hear firsthand again what their concerns and problems are. Would that be brought to council then before any commitments are made? Yes, we would, we would have a proposal, a resolution of some kind uh, brought back to council for approval. That would be my uh, sense to me, Ralph, that uh, that's your 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 job to go out and represent the borough, uh, you and Don. So I, I so, would. Do I need to make a motion, or are you asking for? No, a, I, oh. I asked that earlier, and he said that if there was a consensus, we didn't need a motion because I asked them just before this meeting. Yeah, okay. I just, I just, yep, that, that'll do it for me. Go, go for it, Ralph. All yeah, right. I do. I do have. Us. I have one question. Would it be reasonable to have Deb as chair of the streets committee just to sit in? Well, uh, yeah. Go ahead. yeah. We're we're just meeting with staff. We're not okay. meeting with elected officials. Okay. Uh, that's that's and, why I'm asking. Yes, I'm just trying to be fair with them. Okay. They, they be fair with us. You know, they're not bringing the big guns, so I didn't bring them either. <laughs> okay. Just asking. Does rehearse to ask. Okay. <laughs> Onward and upward. Okay. okay. Do you want uh, me to take the next one? Yes. Yes, you can. Sure. Certainly. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the American Rescue uh, Plan. Uh, last week, U.S. Congress passed and President Biden signed into law the American Rescue Plan that, as we all know, is providing a $1,400 stimulus check to most families in the country. These checks and deposits started reaching families throughout the country this past weekend. 
As part of this plan, local governments have also been provided some financial assistance. Last Wednesday uh, evening, soon after the bill was signed into law, Commissioner Mike Pipe notified the borough that the American Rescue Plan has directly allocated to Belfont $617,035. This allocation will be used to replenish lost revenue and mitigate harm from uh, the pandemic. These funds can be used to cover costs incurred through uh, December 31st, 2024. They can be used for to, these funds can be used to respond to or mitigate the public health emergency with respect to COVID-19 or its negative in, uh, economic impacts, including our, our reduced uh, budget. Uh, covered costs incurred as a result of such an emergency, replace revenue that was lost, delayed, or, or as a result of such emergency, and address the negative economic impacts of such an emergency. We'll we be receiving the first check, which is 50% of the total uh, funds, within 60 days of the enactment. And then the second check will uh, be sent to us sometime at least oh, a year later, but no earlier than 12 months later after that first check is sent. Here's our $500. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this something that could help out the EMS since they saw a drastic reduction in um, calls, I think, in 2020? I would think that would be part of it if, if they're not getting something directly. Well, well, have to read, didn't, have to read didn't you have to put? Didn't you have to put together the the cost? What what our our losses were? For due to COVID, this is, this is something completely separate from what we did last year. But yeah, I I think that that is part of what they're doing. What the I read a little bit of it, and it said that any reduction in taxes after March fourth of this year could not be funds from this could not be used. Any so we had our we actually had a, a straight line tax base our millage rate went up uh, in one place and stayed down we couldn't reopen and then this is confusing we can't reopen the budget to reduce what our our community members are paying and use that this money to to balance that out we can use this money to take care of lost revenues uh, because of what is it. And I think with your question about EMS, that is a possibility, but like Ralph says, we have to look at the what's in the weeds and we haven't gotten that information yet. Well, the additional document in our packet said that uh, use of funds could be used to respond to the COVID-19 emergency and address its economic effects, including through aid to households, small business, Nonprofits and industry such as tourism and hospitality. So I would assume that they would fall under that. I would this this is a question. Would this then go through once we know what our parameters are, would this go through the finance committee to mm -hmm. determine how to use the funds or would this be, be an internal decision? Well, I think finance and certainly, you know, maybe even all of council in a work session, but I, I think it is safe to say we've got to look through all the details and then come back with whatever we have and, and start the committee process and go from there. I'd say we should even get some advice from our the accountants that do our audit. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming that accountants probably won't know what's going on for another month if the PPP is any indication there was all kinds of stuff that was clarified months down the line. Right. But it would be I, that if you can give grants to those areas, I, that's a, a big chunk of change to inject into our local economy. Since we don't know what we're allowed to do yet, um, 
And it's, and the money yeah, won't point. be here for another 40 or 50 days at the earliest. Yeah, that's probably when you'll have an idea of what we can do with it. Yeah. I mean, I would, the, the idea of what our losses were for last year, using the money to to cover those losses that we had for last year, which I thought we did itemize, uh, I think that would be the, the priority before we move forward. But when you mentioned EMS, that's that in my mind is where we took a hit uh, with, for that service uh, with the lack of calls. Um, but yeah, we'll have to find out what the details are. But it, and I, I don't know what you had over in water and sewer, Ralph, as far as the costs that you had in that area. Yes, there, there was some, you know, people who got behind and some additional costs associated with those systems. So we can review all of that once we get into the details. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you know, that part of our operation has to be whatever expenses we had in that area has to come out of this funding also. Any other comments, questions? Uh, EMS, EMS is also going to be hit, Melissa, now that Centercrest has moved out. That's going to decrease their calls. So oh. that isn't related to COVID, but that's another consideration how we need to help them. Um, so any opportunity we get to do that, I think is very good. Yeah. So just FYI, there's uh, school districts also are getting funds from this directly. And the reason we have a, a, an exact amount listed is because we are a CDBG designated community. And because we're CDBG, the federal government decided to give us some, grant us some money directly. Other communities throughout the county that aren't CDBG that run through the county have to get their funds through the county. We did something right. <laughs> Any other comments, questions? Uh, yeah, I, I come on. I have is that Governor Wolf made us, you know, is, is trying to push uh, the police and the fire departments up to the one A group, and I don't know if that was from letters he, that they've been getting, uh, hoping that's what was causing it. But it, I don't know if I remember a date. I think it was sometime in April, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I guess the next round. April fourth, I believe. Yeah. And I, I don't want to drag this meeting out, but I just want to share some knowledge that I have. Um, the county is offering a small business assistant grant program to businesses hit by COVID-19 um, via this Entitlement Communities Development Block Grant CARES Act. Um, and uh, businesses in State College and Belfont have been excluded from that funding. So I'm assuming that these go hand in hand. The reason why Belfont got money directly, and I'm assuming State College is because um, because of the CBD or CDBG, but that is affecting our local businesses. They are excluded from county grants in that respect. Hmm. Was Disappointing. That, was that State College Borough or the Center mm -hmm. Region, Melissa? It just says State College. I, I know the borough. I, I'm is, assuming. Yes. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm. It says excluding State College and Belfont Borough. So I'm assuming. I can't yes. assume Borough since it it follows with that word. Yes. Any. Questions? I would, Just, I, I would assume that what Melissa's talking about would be covered under the sum of the money that Belfont's getting. Yes or no? I don't know. If uh, she's, you just mentioned this was out of the CARES fund. This is a separate set of funding. So okay. I don't know okay. how. Yeah. These are two different 
programs completely. So I don't know how they well, how they've matched together. I I'm just assuming since they're under the same program that there must be some if we're excluded, but we also got money directly, but I can find out, I can get this information forwarded to council if you're interested. That would be helpful, I think, yeah. Melissa. Any other new business? Any public comment? Motion to adjourn? I will make that motion. Prendergast, need a so second. Wants to leave. Hmm. I'll second. I'll second Brack that. Brackbill, <laughs> Prendergast and Brackbill, the two popular people this evening. <laughs> uh, seeing no uh, opposition, we are adjourned at 10.07 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Well. Good night. Take care. Stay Good. safe. Yes.